Hey there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me. In this video, we're gonna talk about jamming alone, meaning by yourself, as opposed to like with a band or something like that. And I'm actually, uh, I, I did a video sort of about this idea, uh, maybe eight months ago or a year ago, a while back anyway, and it was incredibly popular. Uh, it got like a half a million views on YouTube in like six months. And so, I could see that clearly this is something that people want to know about, but that video was kind of just like a bird's eye view and it, and it really wasn't very specific. So uh, I figured I would make uh, a new video or two or three, uh, just a little bit more specific with some, some actual licks, some actual stuff you can do and kind of a way to approach the, the way that, to practice this stuff and to really assimilate it so that you can, you know, really make it your own and, and really play stuff that you're making up, but it sounds like real music, right? So we're gonna use kind of as the basis uh, of today, uh, an idea that I've called playing on the porch in the past. And it's an idea where on the first beat of each measure, you know, following the 12 bar blues form on the first beat of each measure, you'll strike a chord and then you'll follow it up with a one bar lick. You know, so it's gonna be a little bit of a lick, usually from like the E minor blues scale. So if you're not, if you're not familiar with the E minor uh, blues scale in open position, it's the open fret, uh, open sixth string, third fret on the sixth, open first and second on the fifth, open and second on the fourth, open second, third, the third being the blue note on the third string, open third, open third on the top two strings. So that's a blue note, that's a blue note. If you leave those out, you get the, the minor pentatonic scale. And as you probably already know, the minor pentatonic and the minor blues scales are effectively interchangeable. So you can use either one, okay? So let's look at a, a lick that is gonna be slightly shorter than one bar, right? We have to leave the first beat open because it's gonna be a chord. It's gonna be either an E7, an A7, or a B7 because those are the three chords in a blues in E. And we're gonna, we're gonna start with E. It's not the only key, but it's a good one, <laughs> right? So the, the first lick that we're gonna use is something like this, a one. And this is a really classic idea where we're gonna start with the G on the first string, go to the open first string, the E, then the D to the B, we're gonna do a pull off from the third to the open on the second string. And then we're gonna do this really common slide. You're gonna see this a lot where we slide from, in this case, it's the A at the second fret of the third string to the B at the fourth fret of the third string. And that kind of gets us out of box one into box two, but we're really not gonna do much with box two. We're gonna hit the D on the second string and then we're gonna hit the open E string. And then we're gonna strike that B on the third string at the fourth fret and slide it right back to the second fret. And then we're gonna pull off to the open G, the th open third string, and strike that second fret, the E on the fourth string. So in time, it kinda goes like this. One and da, uh, two and da, uh, three and da, uh, four and da, uh, one. Okay, so let's say you got that down. You've got it memorized. That's the first step. Okay, what we wanna do now, is we're gonna take just that one lick. Please don't learn all three of the licks first. <laughs> I'm gonna give you three licks today to give you a little bit of variety, but don't try to do them all at once. Take the first lick and let's put it sort of in the pattern. Okay, so what that means is that we're gonna play, like I said, the E chord, E7, a7 or B7, depending on the 12 bar blues. First bar of the 12 bar blues is E7. One, and now the lick. 
uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and up. So again, one. Now the second bar of the blues, if we do a quick change, is an A7. Then we'll do the lick again. Then back to E. Now if you have a hard time getting all the way from that note to that full chord in basically no time flat, just hit the low E. Just get the lowest maybe a couple of strings of the chord. Don't feel like you have to get the whole chord every time. It doesn't have to be that complicated. You won't miss it. Okay? So again, from the top, one, two. Now here's the four chord bar two. Back to the one chord. Same lick every time. Just get used to it. Bar five, four chord. Back to the one chord. Five chord. Four. One chord. Five. Right? And that is an entire 12 bar blues going back and forth between the chord and the lick. Okay? When you can do that, let's take a look at another lick. Three, four, uh, one. And this is a great double stop with, uh, we have the G at the third fret of the first string and the C sharp at the second fret of the second string. Now, where those come from? Well, the three is from the, the G minor pentatonic scale. That second fret there is the six of the scale. So it's kind of like it comes from the major pentatonic scale, uh, but if you were playing over, say, the A7 chord, you'd probably look at it as the third of the A7. If you're playing over the B7 chord, you just look at it as an extra note kind of thrown into the minor pentatonic scale. There's a lot of ways to explain it. No matter how you choose to explain it, it works, okay? So again, a one and a two and a three and a... Now I'm gonna have the open E and B for the A on the second fret of the third string, pull off to the open on the third string. So that's four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Now notice that I am often picking up you can pick down, you can pick up, it doesn't really matter. I tend to up pick just because I kind of like that sound, which I know is not what I would normally tell you to do, but as long as you're playing it in time, it works just fine. Okay, let's do it a couple more times. One and a two. One and a two. Right, and again, if I put that with chords, I have the E, one and A7, E, E, A, E, and you get the idea. How about the B? Right? So they all work. I just want to show you that they all work. We don't necessarily have to go through it every single time, but when you practice it, you do want to go through it all, right? Play the entire 12 bar form. Use that same lick every time, okay? Let's take a look at a third lick. One. So this one's a little bit more complex, but I'm going to show you a couple of tricks in case it's technically a little bit past your ability. So again, we're starting with that third fret, the G at the first string. Then we're gonna have a, hit the open E, pull off, uh, hammer onto the second fret, the F sharp, which is the second of the scale. Again, it's just a note that we can add. It's not really part of the E minor pentatonic scale, but it's a great note to add. And then we're gonna pull off to the open and then down to the third fret D uh, on the second string. So in time, it goes one and uh, two and uh, two and uh, 
that can be a little bit tricky. If you can't do that, just do two and uh, just play the F sharp, the E, and the D. So if it's tough, one and uh, two and uh. If you can do it, one and uh, two and uh. Then we're gonna go to beat three, that open E. Now on the uh of three, I'm gonna slide really quick from the third fret, the B flat, down to the A at the second fret of the third string. Again, if you can't, just strike the A. You can't do the slide. So three and uh, then the open G, E at the second fret of the fourth string is gonna pull off to D, the open fourth string. So one and a two. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. Again, if we add in chords, one and a, a seven, E seven, B seven uh, would be A seven. So again, any of the chords can go with that lick and should go with that lick. So you should get used to doing each one of those three licks back and forth with the chords. This will help with a bunch of different things. You get a really good idea in your mind. It, it really, really helps you know where you are in the 12 bar form. And that's huge, not only for your acoustic playing or solo, I tend to sort of combine the terms solo playing, meaning playing by yourself and acoustic playing. Because usually when you play acoustic, you're not playing in a band, you're playing by yourself. It doesn't mean you can't, it's just kind of how we tend to intermingle the terms. Um, but even when you solo, you know, like as in take a guitar solo on your electric guitar, it's really easy to get lost in the form. So the more you do this kind of playing, where you really ingrain that 12 bar form into your ear, the less often you're gonna get lost in your electric playing. So it's, it, it does double duty and it definitely feeds both sides of the equation. Okay, now one thing that we can do that also makes this kind of fun, you know, we're sort of creating a little song here, right? So we have a one chord, four chord, five chord, etc. But the, you know, kind of what separates the men from the boys a lot of times is a turnaround. We want to have some kind of cool turnaround. It's a great way to sort of bring it all back home. And if you've not heard the term turnaround, it's the last two bars of a blues. And it's uh, usually the one chord and the five chord, but it could be one, four, one, five. It could be a lot of different things. And there are some classic blues turnaround licks that you should know. One of them is something like this. Three, four, uh, one. Okay, now there's a few things I need to explain. We're starting off with the open E. It says it's an E7 chord, right? You're never gonna see me play an E7. That's kind of the implied chord. So we have the open low E. We have the open high E. I could pick those. It's easier, I believe, to strike the lower note with your pick and the upper note with the middle finger of the right hand. Now, if you don't use a pick normally and you use like your thumb and your finger, you're in luck. And you can do that too, you can play this all finger style. But I use my pick for the lower notes. So the low E, the upper E. Now my middle finger is gonna land at the fifth fret D on the fifth string and strike the top open E as well. And that open E is gonna stay. Strike it again and then I'm gonna slide down to the fourth fret and leave that top string open. Third fret and leave that top string open and hit the top string again. And then down to the second fret, the B, still with that high E open. So one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, I'm gonna do a little bass. Two, second fret on the fifth string, the B, open A, A sharp or B flat. Now I'm gonna strike a B7, but just like three notes of it. If you wanna play it all, you can. I just didn't want to have to move my fingers that fast. <laughs> 
So that's beat three. We're gonna strike it again, and then you'll notice some, some zeros. Okay, those are what I call a pick drag. And what happens is a lot of times as I go from B to E, I do something like that. Okay, so the next chord that's gonna come after this is gonna be an E. So I'm gonna create this kind of pick drag. So anytime you see like a big stack of zeros that doesn't seem to make any sense, that's a pick drag. Okay, that means that we're on our way someplace else and we've hit some open strings along the way. Sometimes you'll see it as a stack of X's and you might, you know, have the strings muted. And you'll see the big stack of X's. Again, it's a, I call it a pick drag. We're just sort of dragging the pick across the strings. Either they're muted or they're open, but either way, it's not something that you want to beat yourself up over and, and really try to play, okay? So if we play this one more time, Oh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one. Right? One more time. Three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, four, uh, one, two, and three, four, uh, one. Okay, so now I have three licks. I have this, this framework, right? This playing on the porch framework, which is strike a chord on beat one, play a little one bar lick. Next measure comes along, play the right chord, play the little one bar lick. But I have three different licks to choose from. Now's when things get interesting because I can start to sort of mix and match them. Let's see what happens if I do that, do exactly that. I kind of play, I'll play the first lick sometimes, I'll play the second lick sometimes, I'll play the third lick sometimes. And I'll add in this turnaround. Check it out. One, two, three, four. Of course, if I was playing for real, I'll say, and not just an example, I would go around again. So after I got and I'd mix and match it some other way. In any way that you want. That's the best part about it. If you've got those three licks down, okay, and you've got that that framework of how to put them together, and you've got your turnaround. You can play that around and around and around 20 times in a row if you want to. <laughs> and once you kind of get the hang of it, let's say you learn one more lick. Well, now you've got, you know, hundreds of different ways that you can combine those three or four or five licks, right? So as you add, it doesn't take much uh, to, to add and to really, really, you know, take it someplace new. Okay, so work on this, um, I'll say for today or, or right now, Play around with this. Try to get the three licks memorized. The finger movements in these licks are something that you're, you're going to see. They're going to come back over and over and over again. What we'll do is in, uh, in another video after this, we'll talk about two bar phrases because a lot of times you can actually, uh, a different kind of framework is to play rhythm for two measures and then do a fill for two measures. And sometimes those two measure fills are nothing more than two one measure fills stuck together. So one measure fills can be stuck together to create two measure fills. Two measure fills can be broken apart to create one, two one measure fills. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you might not think about, but these are, these are ways that you can, you know, really expand how many options you have with very little new stuff. So it's not a lot to memorize, that's the, that's the key. All right, so uh, I'll sign off for today. We'll have some fun with that, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.